Hi, this is Lit with Chris, and today we're looking at dystopian fiction. In this video, I'll be looking at the origins, conventions, and the themes of dystopian fiction and why it remains so popular as a genre to this day. If you find the video useful, need book recommendations, or need to know analysis for literature that you might be covering in school, then be sure to click subscribe via the link below. As with a number of literary genres or movements, many people argue that dystopian fiction was created around the time of the French Revolution. The French Revolution that finally succeeded in 1799 was an inspiration for many writers, as it was an experiment in what happens when normal people overthrow the all-powerful monarchy that had ruled since the nation had come into existence. The revolutionaries wanted to establish a country where liberty, equality and fraternity were available for all people. This is an admirable and recognisable goal for most of us in the modern world, who live in democracies that are similar in spirit to this historic movement. However, one of Europe's first dystopias warned of a world where everyone was equal. A Trip to the Island of Equality was written a few years before the French revolutionaries finally overthrew Louis XVI, and it paints a negative depiction of what life would be like if men and women were all truly equivalent. It wasn't a popular publication at the time, and has since faded into obscurity. But it does offer an indication of where dystopias come from. In a new world that was supposedly run or voted for by the people, and not a king or queen with absolute power, Mankind's decisions and mistakes were often mirrored in the literature that writers created. Events or discoveries such as Charles Darwin's theories on evolution, the Industrial Revolution, the birth of the film industry and the First and Second World Wars all provided authors with ample inspiration about how society was changing for the worse, despite the increase in democratic politics. If we can say that dystopias have been around as a genre for the last 200 years, what are some of the conventions that tie all of these titles together? Dystopian fiction is primarily concerned with warning about what is to come. Consequently, the action very often takes place in a recognisable version of the future. The protagonist is always trapped or unable to act freely in this new version of the world. This applies to all of the characters in the book. The likes of individual freedoms or free speech are often restricted and friendship is kept to a minimum by the government. The government also has control over the likes of life's fundamentals, such as food, water and means of communication. There is also an idea promoted by the government that its civilians are living in a utopian or better reality than that of the past. There is a constant threat of violence or war that the public are being protected from in some way, hence making the people even more dependent on those ruling the state. Lastly, the aforementioned isolated protagonist always seems dissatisfied with their life in the world of the book. Very often told from first person or limited third person perspective, the reader is privy to the fears, hatred and curiosity that the main character holds towards those in charge. It's a fair assumption to make that dystopian literature is very often used to comment on or criticise the government in power. George Orwell's 1984 and to a slightly lesser extent Animal Farm are both cornerstones of the dystopian literature genre. These two titles came about as reflections on the effect of communism on 20th century Russia, as well as the fallout of World War II amongst the European countries involved. But are there any other talking points that this type of literature explores? Dystopian fiction does indeed offer a bleak image of the future based on today or the time of writing's political situation. Despite many countries seeking the equality that democracy claims to bring, writers also warn against the unwanted consequences of listening to everyone's opinion. The tyranny of some governments and authoritative leadership in general reigns supreme in the dystopian genre, but this is often paired with the dangers that technology poses to the masses. 
breakthroughs in mass communication, housing, cloning, big business and nuclear weaponry have all provided authors with bleak visions of the future that are designed to educate attitudes at the time of writing. The government imposed restrictions and dangers of technology often bring out the worst in people. A sense of selfishness that eventually leads to betrayal is therefore common in dystopian fiction, with allies, friends or family members turning on one another so as to escape a brutal punishment at the hands of the authorities. Writers often warn against this type of division, implying that if normal people are to overcome powerful institutions, then they must do so together. One way that characters can access some semblance of humanity or connection is through art, music or literature. These elements of our everyday life have very often been manipulated or eradicated in the dystopian world as a means to eliminate personal expression that may contradict the aims of the government. In recent years, the dystopian genre has seen a huge resurgence in the novel, graphic novel, TV and film industry. Works such as The Giver, Divergent, Uglies, Legend, The Hunger Games and Maze Runner have all enjoyed a massive amount of commercial success, either in print or on screen. Why is the genre so popular, particularly amongst younger people? John Austinson, a professor of English literature, claims that young people find the genre so appealing because of their changing outlook on the world. The world in which our parents, our school and our government seem dependable starts to end around the time that we enter secondary school or our teenage years. It's at around this time that we start to reflect on the fact that these people or institutions are not quite as reliable to make all the right decisions as we thought they were. In fact, sometimes they make some pretty serious mistakes. This loss of innocence is mirrored in the protagonist of dystopian fiction. The character comes to understand more about the limits, restrictions and secrets of the world that they inhabit as they gain greater and greater levels of freedom. Depending on which country you're in, young people today are being forced to come to terms with the realities of student debt, rising house prices, a saturated job market and environmental disasters all of which have been caused indirectly by the generations that came before them. Protagonists who feel powerless or desperately battle against things that seem completely out of their control are increasingly sympathetic in the eyes of many modern readers. And depending on your viewpoint, they offer us inspiration or dread for the years to come. If you found this video useful, uh, need book recommendations or need to know analysis for popular literature that you might be covering in school, then be sure to subscribe and like via the links below. Don't forget there is also a free knowledge organiser in the description to help you with your continued study of the dystopian genre. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.